All right, do it yourself. Before there was DIY, there was do it yourself. Electronic educational kit, a Move It 938 sensor control PC board ready assembled. You know it's good when it has an atomic symbol. It's electronic control infrared sensor with a robot with programming function through infrared control disks. Very cool, and in multiple languages. Clever robot moved reading the running command white and black mark by an infrared sensor, which you write it in a disk. Um, so I think what it is is there's this disk here with white and black and it rotates and it tells it whether to go forwards and backwards or left or right and I think that disk spins around you get to program it by putting in a certain sequence. So uh, these are actually pretty expensive I think if you were to buy one new. Um, I got this one off of eBay cheap because somebody had it and never built it. It's actually a Japanese product. Um, ELE Hobby from uh, Kaho Musen uh, Company Limited. Hmm. Fukuoka, Fukuoka, Japan. But it's imported into Compton, California. Uh, Mahalo place, Mahalo. Hey. Okay, so uh, let's open it up and see what's inside. Oh, wait a minute. Let's make sure that we're okay. Recommended for ages 10 and up. I qualify. Oh, I feel styrofoam. No, oh, look at this. Anything else? Nope. All right. We have an assembly book. Assembly instruction book. This is the novice. Novius? Novius. Oh, look at this. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Exploded diagram. Oh. What is Navius? Navius is named after the words navigate and Mevius. <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Uh, okay. Uh, assembling, the assembling the mechanical portion. Wow. Complicated. Uh, oh, here's the stabilizer program disk. Okay. Check and adjust after completion of assembly. Adjustment when movement is wrong. Motor maintenance. Parts list. Wow. Things complicated. Circuit mechanism. There we go. We like. Can you see that? Let's see here. So there's two photosensors and they go into Schmidt triggers and then they fire. And so there's three motors. And this one fires from that one and this, these two, hmm. I don't know. I'm not quite sure about that one. All right. The Navius is a robot which is equipped with a reflecting type photo interrupter in the sensor section and can run reading the black and white colors. All right. And so it has an inverter with Schmidt trigger so as not to misdrive in the case of interference by other diffused lights. Ah, here's the guys. Yoshida-san and Noguchi-san. Very nice. <laughs> Rendered in Japan, 1984. It is vintage. Vintage, vintage. This is cool. <laughs> All right. I remember vaguely seeing these and they were like uber expensive. Maybe you can still buy them. I think you can still buy them. All right, let's uh, follow the instructions here.
All right, uh, I've completed uh, step one, which is uh, putting all these gears on here. So that goes there. Uh, everything is in a little bag, so uh, you, like one gear came out of Q4, one gear came out of Q5, so you have to like keep all the other parts in here so you know where they are. So only take one, don't open the bags and throw them, throw them all in a big bin, you won't find anything. So keep, keep them all separate. So we're going to step two. All right, I'm in the, I'm, I finished uh, step three. This has been taking hours. <laughs> this is real fiddly. Uh, lots of little screws and stuff. Anyway, I've got three motors and brackets and gears and uh, yeah, lots of little tiny, 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 tiny screws and a little bitty washers and a little bit, uh, a little bitty nuts. So anyway, there it is. Uh, steps one, two, and three complete. So I think I'm done for the day. <laughs> I'm gonna wait. Uh, step one and two, one, two, and three have been taking a long time. All right, uh, it's mostly together now. And uh, now I need to uh, make it go. So I did figure out how the, uh, how the circuit works. There's three motors. This motor is just on all the time and it just makes this wheel go round and round and round. And then the other two are the, are the sensors for the two motors. So it's either left motor, right motor, left motor, right motor. So what you do is you create a little disc. So I created this disc and if uh, both motors are on, it goes forward. If no motors are on, it stops and then it can turn left and it can turn right and go forward and stop. So this goes on this gear here and I need to poke a hole in it and it'll go over this pin and then there's a weight that holds it down and then that unit goes inside this. So this is the reader and you pop that down and uh, now it's all programmed. So let me, uh, let me poke a hole in this piece of paper. I've got some punches I think would be, be good for that. So figure out how big a hole I need. All right, I had a uh, punch the uh, punch the right size. So this will go on like that. And then this, this weight, oop, whoa, <laughs> this weight just holds it down and then it spins around. So hopefully there's enough friction there that it won't skip a beat. We'll find out. So that goes in the uh, hair and then the reader the reader has the two sensors here that line up and it should go around and around and around and uh, move. So I guess I should put some batteries in it. It requires a nine volt battery and two double A's. So let's scrounge those up. So I have the batteries in it and when I turn it on, the uh, right wheel goes round and round and round and the disc does not go round and round and round. So those two motors must be swapped. So I must have something wrong over here. This is where the motors go in. It's the, all the motors are color coded. So the white green motor. So the white motor here is M. C and MC it says white. It says like I have it. I have it wired right. Maybe the maybe this. MC MC should be the one that's on all the time. Hmm. I don't know. Seems kind of strange. Why don't I just uh, swap the, uh, see which one's going to run, run, run all the time? The orange one. Let me swap the orange and the white wires. See if it, see if it fixes itself. Everything's on it. Oh. On pins and plugs. Let me turn it on now. Uh-oh. That goes around, around, around. 
uh, uh, MC. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Disconnect these wires, turn it on. Okay, nothing's going around. Okay, that one goes. How about this one? No, it's not going at all. Oh, there it goes. It's, uh, okay, maybe it's just, um, oh yeah, there it goes. Yeah, it was just kind of plugged up. <laughs> Yeah, this. All right. Now it's supposed to be able to adjust the uh, tensiometers to get it to start and stop. Maybe that's it. Ah, I think it's working, except this middle gear system won't continue. It's like it's uh, hung up. Let me turn this one off. There we go. So I can get my wheel moving. Why is my wheel not moving? Maybe it's bound up. No, that looks good. Maybe this motor is not up to snuff. MC. Okay, let's just hook it to hook it to the battery. Is that going? Yeah, that works good. So the motor's good. Maybe the transistor is weak. TR1. TR1. It's over there. And if I... TR1. has a resistor should be on all the time oh there we go ah something happened maybe a bad solder joint ah yeah if I move if I move the leads around oh yeah I think the uh, that's bad soldering. Let's take a look. Oop. TR1.
That doesn't look quite right. I don't know why they have a transistor. Why not just use it, use the, use the battery. Hmm. I don't know. I don't understand. Oh, that guy's touching. All right, it really came down to the gear meshing. Uh, you have to make sure that the, the motor has a, a spur gear and it's not too tight and needs to have a little bit of backlash. So uh, that was the problem with making it go. So now, uh, it's very noisy, but you see this thing spinning and the wheels do different things depending on where they are. So now they're, uh, they're, they're off, and then they'll come into the on again. And then uh, one, wheel, one wheel only goes, so it'll turn. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So it's interesting uh, having a uh, mechanical programming, right? Uh, you can think of this as uh, some type of ancient technology. <laughs> God, it's noisy. Um, this is probably very similar to the, uh, what it was, Headley Lamar or whatever, it had the patent for the frequency hopping thing for torpedoes, or I think that was the thing. And it worked on a system like this, like a player piano system. Um, so you can imagine that as it went around, it would change frequencies and you would have to have a matching disc on your receiver to make sure you were hopping to the correct frequencies as well. Um, so anyway, yeah, pretty cool little toy. Uh, ancient 1984, I think, that's what I said it was. Um, yeah, this thing's been around a while. But uh, that's kind of fun build. Uh, I don't think I'll buy another one. <laughs> uh, I got this one for like 20 bucks on eBay, so I couldn't pass it up. I think they're like over $100 or something like that. So there you go.